Hello and welcome to the second video in the Ultimate Notion tutorial series here on YouTube. In the first one we talked about the basic interface of Notion, how to set up your workspace and how to get uh, everything like up and running and today we're going to do a deep dive into the core architecture, how does Notion actually work. Um, but before we do that don't forget to subscribe to the channel so that you get notified whenever a new episode of this uh, course releases. Uh, I will do one every Sunday and by the end of it you'll go from uh, Notion, uh, not knowing nothing about Notion to being a true Notion master. Also um, in the description there's a checklist with all the keyboard shortcuts for Notion so if you want to speed up your workflow which is particularly helpful in the beginning uh, definitely go and check that one out. There will also be timestamps, so if you want to jump to a specific section, you can do that as well. But yes, today we're going to talk about the Notion architecture and the, the big elephant in the room that, uh, if you use Notion for the first time, probably confuses you. There are no folders. Instead, there's just this like weird pages thing that uh, sometimes appear in the sidebar and you're not exactly sure like, okay, how are you supposed to save anything? How are you going to suppose, how are you supposed to find anything ever again if you have like hundreds of pages in here? Uh, don't worry, after today's video, you'll know exactly how to organize and set everything up so that um, your workspace will work perfectly fine whether you have five pages or 5,000. Uh, it will be a bit technical, but it's super important if you want to know, uh, use Notion really, really well and avoid one of the biggest mistakes that people make when they just start out using Notion. And with that, let's jump right in. Okay, so how does Notion work? Well, in Notion, everything that you see is either a block, a page, or a database. Uh, the block is the smallest organizational unit in Notion and it's uh, it can be pretty much anything. Every time you are in your Notion workspace and you hit enter you create a new block even if you don't know it. You will always get like this type slash for commands uh, as a new line. We're going to look at those in the next video in more details but um, yeah uh, you can just write some text uh, um, like text uh, is the most basic Notion block something like that. Uh, and now if I press enter and write a new line, uh, even though it just looks like one par uh, like two paragraphs of text in a Google Doc or so, it's actually two distinct blocks. And you notice this because if you hover over them, both these uh, blocks have their own options. You always get a plus icon that doesn't do anything except for like adding a, a block below. So if I click on that, it just gives me a new line here uh, and I get these six dots. And these so six dots are sort of the context menu for an individual block. So I can click it and hold it and then I can drag it around. So I can move a block everywhere. Now it's like here, now it's uh, below here and you always get this blue line indicator as to where you will drop it. You can also click on the six dots and then you get a range of other op options so you can delete it, you can duplicate it and you can turn the block into something else. Again, we're going to look into these options in more detail in uh, the next video but just for now uh, know that because everything is like contained in this block when you press enter you can always apply a different sort of formatting or like feature to um, this line. So if you wanted to turn this into a, uh, oops, into a heading uh, it's super easy if you want to uh, turn uh, your um, block back into text or into a callout or into something, that's super easy. So you can just like write a bunch of things and then later apply formatting. And if you change your mind about uh, what it's supposed to be, it's super simple to um, adapt and change. So blocks are super powerful and then can, they can be pretty much anything. One thing they can't be, let's turn this back into text, is they can't be in the sidebar. So Last time in the first video we learned about the sidebar and that we can favorite the page uh, and then it will appear here and also like shows us all our pages but we won't be able to see an individual block in the sidebar. So if I open up Notion's core architecture we see it just shows us no pages inside and even though like uh, we have like these individual blocks and they are unique we can drag them around they will never show up there. But and that's really really important they are unique. So if you uh, click on the six dots and you uh, click on copy link to block, uh, 
then you have now a very unique uh, address for this individual block and you can go anywhere else in your Notion workspace and you can uh, connect to there. So if I say, okay, cool title, um, I want to mention this block and now I can just uh, copy the text here and I can either click on link uh, and paste the link here um, or alternatively, what I can do as well in Notion, if you mark something and you have a, a link copied, you can just press uh, like paste and we'll paste it over it. And now you have this link to the block and you can just click on it and we'll jump to that specific block. You can also do it on the same page, right? If, uh, if we would uh, make this small and now we have like here uh, something at the bottom and we want to uh, be able to quickly jump to the bottom. We can again, copy the link to the block. Uh, we can have jump down here. Let's open this up again so that it's <laughs> more impressive. Uh, we copy this over there, we click on it, and we jump to the bottom of our page. So the block is unique and we can mention it. We can also like if we if we paste it like the link not over something but just like that in our workspace, uh, we have the option to mention a block. If we mention a block, uh, it will uh, give us the preview text of it and uh, this thing and we can click on it there. And if we Right now, something at the bottom uh, is pretty, oops, pretty cool. Uh, and we go back up, you see it, it updates like that mention of the block. And the last option is the sync block. We're going to look at that in more detail in a different one. But uh, yeah, uh, through this, uh, you can reference any single block everywhere in your workspace. And that's already much, much more powerful than what you get in a traditional uh, doc system. Mm. So it actually behaves more like a website element. Uh, not sure whether you, uh, if, depending on how much you know about website building, but um, if, you, uh, if you're if you on a page, right, and you, you, you click on something and it automatically jumps down to a later section, maybe through um, the title of content, uh, it behaves pretty similar here in Notion. So that's a block and it's pretty powerful. The next element that you have in a Notion workspace is a page. <laughs> and a page is, as you can see in this beautiful illustration, nothing else than a collection of a lot of blocks. So here we are uh, on this Notion core architecture page and inside we have a bunch of blocks. We have these toggle blocks that store something inside. We have um, our like text and our links. So everything is contained in that page. We already learned a bit about pages in the first video. We know that we can favorite them. So now uh, if we favorite them, they will appear uh, in the sidebar. Uh, here it is. If we remove it, it will disappear again. Um, if it's a top level page, we also see it here. And if it's something inside another page, we will see them uh, in here in the sort of hierarchical structure. Um, we also know that we have the options through the, those three dots. So options for a block, six dots, <laughs> op options for the page, three dots. Um, and um, at the very first look, it's like pretty similar to um, a page in Google Docs or something like that, with the exception that you have these more powerful um, blocks inside. Um, one other thing that's uh, probably interesting to know is that um, Notion pages are just like blocks uh, unique uh, by default. So you don't need to worry about naming them. I can create uh, 50 <laughs> Notion core pages, core architecture pages or 50 first pages. So there's no need to, let's just do this. Let's create another first uh, page. And if you uh, were in any normal sort of document management system, it would now force you to pick a different uh, name because uh, on the same level, so, so to say in the same folder, you have now two documents that have the same name. This one has now an emoji, so maybe it's a bit different, but we can remove it. And then we see, okay, it's actually absolutely identical <laughs> from the way it looks to us, but to Notion, it's different and unique. So you never need to have like new document uh, two, three or four. So that's uh, a page, a collection of blocks. And then we have databases. And um, you can imagine databases um, sort of uh, like a collection of pages in one way. Um, and um, databases, if you've never had anything to do with them, they look a little bit like uh, like Excel or Google Sheets. And that's uh, to begin with, uh, it's not like a, a bad uh, <laughs> metaphor, like a bad comparison. They are actually not spreadsheets. Uh, they, they behave differently. We'll have a more detailed look at that in a later one. But for now, uh, all that you need to know is that um, in essence, your database uh, consists of pages in the first row, and then sort of metadata or like other information about that page uh, in the other columns. So um, if we just 
create one here. Let's press enter here and let's create. Um, you create them also by uh, typing a page, but then instead of picking the page options up here, picking a database option below. And again, we look at them in more detail later. But for now, let's just uh, just very quickly look at the way it's structured. So we have like a new database here. And this where it says name, that's the, the main column. So this is where I said that you can store your pages. So you could say, okay, first entry, second entry, and third, oops, third entry. Um, and then you can uh, add information about that um, uh, entry. And uh, the, the most important thing uh, about this is, uh, let's say something like something, uh, other and that and uh, maybe we can create also like tag one just as an example. So um, unlike in a, in a spreadsheet um, these rows are always connected so there's no way to uh, like not have first entry associated with tag one and denote something. Um, so that's why I say um, you can imagine this as if you have your pages in the first one then you add information or metadata in these property lines. And you see that, of course, if I move like first entry around, uh, it still has these things associated. And there's no way, like in a spreadsheet or so, to move a cell uh, independently from the whole entry. Um, and yeah, now it looks like just uh, like a table or so. But the, the super, super cool thing, uh, and that's the real game changer, as you will uh, notice later down the line, is that all these entries, you can obviously leave them like that, but they are pages on their own. So we can click always on open. And now we see that this entry is a page in itself. So we can have uh, another uh, block of text, uh, just like in a page that doesn't live in a database. It behaves exactly the same way. The only difference is that here at the top, it always shows us the properties or that metadata um, from the database. Um, and that's super, super cool. Uh, you can build so many things uh, with that, as you see later on the line. Um, databases, just like pages, can be in the sidebar, so we can favor them. Uh, and now, if we look at our sidebar, we see we have our database here. We also would see if we open up our Notion core architecture page that we have now this database living inside it. So um, they can be in there. They are also unique, so you can name them <laughs> always the same. Um, now, uh, two quick confusing things uh, for beginners in Notion. Um, you can't have a database inside a database. So whereas you can have like a normal page in here, right? But if you click on here, you see it doesn't give you the option to create another database in here. So you can't uh, just, whereas you can like have pages inside databases, you can't create new database, uh, database bases <laughs> directly in here, but you can then create a database inside the page. So what I could do here is I could say, okay, give me another page. And this one could now be um, like, oops, a nested database. So now we go back to our um, database, we click on the second entry, and we see we have our nested database in here, but we couldn't have it directly in there. Um, so also if I would drag it out of here and try to, uh, you, you see it won't let me drop it in here if I had like a page here, a normal one, page, um, test, and just some text. Um, then we can go now back to our new database and we open again the second entry, and you see this here, the page, can be dragged a into another page, but it can also be dragged in the database, as indicated by this blue line. So now it lives here. But the database can't be dragged in the other database. It always have, has to live in a page. So that's one of the uh, slightly confusing things about databases uh, and Notion's architecture. And the other slightly confusing thing is that you can have um, a database like we had it just now, like as this full page, but you can also create a database as an inline object. So if I type slash and database, it gives me the option to create a database here. Now I have a database that lives uh, here. So this is now like an inline database uh, and it behaves just like uh, the other one. We have an inline database and we have a new database with the exception that I see it directly here and I don't have to click on it. Um, we're going into more details about the difference. There's next to none, just like a very slight one, um, but you can use them interchangeably and you can also always turn them into each other. So you can see, I can always say turn into page. And now this is like a full database and you can always uh, also uh, click on the uh, six dots and say, okay, turn this into an inline database. And then you see it again here. 
Okay, so much about uh, databases. So now if you were to uh, look at this uh, structure in Notion, you could imagine that um, we have um, this hierarchy of a block that always lives inside a page that always lives inside a database. Um, so the database would be our top level uh, organizational unit. We would have pages below and then we ha would have blocks at the, at the bottom. And like this strict hierarchical structure would already make for a great tool, but Notion is a lot more powerful. And uh, it's not that strict because uh, a block can be a page and a block can be a database. And if that sounds a bit confusing, don't worry. Uh, it's actually quite simple. Uh, so let me just explain. Um, as we saw uh, in uh, already uh, with some examples before here, um, the a block unit, if we type on the, the options, go on the options, can be a lot of different things, but it can also just be a page or database itself. So instead of having to uh, always go from database to page to block, we can have uh, pages um, and databases inside each other very flexibly. Uh, so we see on the side here, right, we have our Notion Core Architecture and we have our new database. And in that new database entries, we had more pages. So uh, in the end, the block is the, the core unit uh, of Notion and it can be pretty much anything. Our blocks can be databases, our blocks can be text, images, embeds, videos, pages, everything in Notion is a block. And uh, everything can be mentioned elsewhere. Uh, because we already know, right, that like uh, if we have a, if we copy the link to a blog, it will appear somewhere else. Well, the same is true for a page. So if we go here for Notion's core architecture, click on the three dots and say, okay, copy the link here. Or if we would do the same, click here and say, okay, um, uh, copy the link to this one. Then we can mention it elsewhere. So we copied Notion's core architecture page. So now we can go to the cool title page and we can just paste it. And now it gives us the option to mention or link to the page. Slight difference, uh, we'll cover that later. Um, we have, and now we have a link to that page. And uh, it looks just like the uh, the page that uh, uh, here, right? It's like it's pretty much uh, the same, but the big difference, or, or like this one, the big difference is that it has all when we, when you copy a link, it always gives you this arrow icon. And this arrow icon indicates that whatever you're about to click on is not living in this location, but elsewhere. Because if you open it, right, like cool title, there are no pages inside. But if you look at this, you could think that Notion's core architecture page lives here. And only through this arrow uh, do you know that it, this is not like the actual location. It's just a link to the original location. So if I click on here, we jump uh, here and it's selected again. So this creates awesome flexibility for the way you set up your workspace, but it can be uh, potentially very confusing once you build a more complex workspace. And at the end of the video, I give you uh, the recommendation of how you can avoid that confusion and make sure that your Notion workspace is scalable and you never uh, lose pages or are not sure where something lives anymore. But before we get to that, let's just um, take a, a last quick look uh, at um, the sidebar just to uh, remind you again um, so uh, in this everything that you see in the sidebar is either uh, a page or a database and um, inside these pages and database are then all the blocks with all your content um, okay so that sounded maybe <laughs> a bit confusing and maybe you're also not, not sure okay like what's the, the cool thing about that well uh, it will become clear once you compare um, Notion to the traditional folder system. So in a very normal uh, uh, organizational system, you have a strictly hierarchical structure. Here on the right, you have your main folder, uh, maybe on your desktop, maybe on your Google Drive. Then you have folders nested inside, and then you have uh, maybe folders inside those folders. And uh, if you compare to Notion uh, to replicate the exact same structure, what you would probably do or what you could do is you create could create a page. And then inside that page, you could create three more pages. And then inside one page, you could uh, create another two layers of pages. And uh, we already started it here, right, with our first page. We have here our second level one. So this one would be the main page. Then this one would be one of the second level pages. And we could just create another two in there. And then we had like maybe some more nested inside. And with a traditional folder system, that's about as far as it goes. So now if you want to uh, go here, you always need to remember that this folder is inside here 
is inside here is inside here. And there's also no other way uh, to go here uh, than to click through all of them or to favorite it into your sidebar. But with Notion, because you can, everything is a block and everything can be referenced <laughs> everywhere, uh, you are uh, not limited to that. You could go ahead and mention this like lowest uh, number of page at the very front one. So we could go here, second level page, okay. Oh, there's a third level page even, I forgot about that. Okay, so let's take that third level page, let's copy the link to it, let's go back to our first level page, uh, paste it here, uh, we mention it, and now we can jump to the third level page directly from here. But we can also jump to it from a totally different page. It doesn't have to be this uh, the folder structure, it lives inside, right? So we can go to our cool title and we can also mention it here. Uh, so as you can see, you can have um, your um, oops, your pages mentioned everywhere. It can be, uh, there's, there's no limit to the number of references you can do. And with that, you can uh, see your information in a lot of different places uh, without having to constantly duplicate content like in a traditional folder system. So that's already pretty, pretty awesome. Um, but again, uh, as I've already mentioned, it can be easy to lose track with that. Um, so uh, how do you actually make sure that your Notion workspace is scalable and that you uh, don't start losing pages and never find them again? Well, um, we already saw that we have kind of two ways to organize pages. We can simply store pages inside other pages. That's how most Notion beginners start and that's like uh, how pretty much everyone starts building their workspace uh, at first. And then you could also store pages inside databases. And that later approach is, in my opinion, actually the much better, much superior approach to organizing your workspace. So the biggest recommendation in this video is that when you build out your workspace, um, do not store pages inside pages. Um, there are obviously exceptions to that rule. Um, sometimes you just want to like make a subcategory on a page or so, then it's obviously totally fine. But in general, I would recommend uh, to not use um, pages as your folder structure and instead always organize your pages through databases. So the way you would do this is that at like the top level that we have here, um, we don't create pages, we create um, databases. So what we do is we create um, maybe, um, let's start with uh, like the first and very uh, simple uh, database that we can just call pages and documents. And this will be a table um, and it will be a new database and we just uh, we can have a name and a tag for now, that's fine. And then what we're going to do is we're going to drag all our other uh, pages that we have inside here. So let's, let me remove um, the other content here and let's get them uh, all in here. Um, and this is the much better uh, organization structure um, for a few reasons. First, by having all your pages uh, in a database, you can um, start uh, tagging them, give them context. So I could, for example, now say, okay, um, we can tag them by lecture, right? So uh, this one was uh, video one. Um, this one also was created in video one. And this one was created in video one. And now we have also this one that we created in video two. Um, so now uh, it is super easy for me if I, even if I forget, you know, okay, where does uh, the cool title page live or where does the first page live? I don't need to remember what's the structure. I just need to, I, I can, if I, it's enough that I know, okay, it's in video one. Um, and I can uh, add more context uh, like this. I can also say, okay, what's the, maybe, maybe there's a type for it, right? So maybe I have a type for it. If you have, um, if you have classes, for example, to organize, you could use your classes. So this is just like a, a demo uh, page, like a, this is also a demo page, this is a demo page, Any, anything is a demo page, but this one was more like a presentation page, right? So we had like presentation on here with some images and so on. So um, now instead of having to rely uh, on you remembering that a specific page lives somewhere, you can just do that. Um, and actually what you then should probably also do is unless there's like a specific reason why the third level and the second level page live in first page, uh, because you say, okay, it absolutely has to be there. Um, but uh, if it doesn't, then I would actually recommend that you move them also in there. And um, because by removing this um, hierarchical structure and instead storing it all in a database and then using uh, contextual information to, to organize your stuff, uh, you are much more likely to find things again 
and you reduce the risk of uh, creating these knowledge silos or like these uh, yeah um, pages that are somewhere hidden inside 10 other pages and you'll never find them again. So uh, we go into uh, more detail about like this sort of architecture later in this course, but uh, already as a takeaway here, um, I would recommend that you organize everything in a database. Not everything has to live in the same database, obviously, right? Uh, we'll talk about that again also in more detail later. You would create separate databases for like separate type of key information, but uh, in, in general, uh, you would like try to have on the main level of your workspace, mainly uh, maybe only one or maximum two pages and all the rest should be databases that then store all your other workspace documents. Awesome. So that's everything that we had uh, for today. Um, remember, everything is a block. And if you organize your workspace, uh, you uh, start by building up these databases that contain all the other pages. So that was the second uh, episode of this complete Notion course on YouTube. This one was definitely very theoretical, but I hope you still learned something uh, about uh, Notion. Again, I think it's super important to talk about these first principles. This will uh, make your understanding of Notion a lot more complete and will help you uh, learn more complex uh, concepts much faster if you know, okay, what is actually the basic building, what are the basic building blocks um, of Notion. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and make sure that you get notified when the next episode releases. Again, if you have any questions about what we talked in this uh, lesson or about anything else, uh, leave a comment below and I'll be sure to answer it. Um, also, again, quick reminder that in the, um, in the description you'll find uh, a link to a checklist with all uh, the different uh, keyboard shortcuts for Notion that you can use to speed up your workflow, in particular in the beginning. It will be super, super helpful to learn these uh, to navigate Notion much, much faster. Okay. Uh, then we are done for today. Um, congratulations to uh, completing lecture two and I'll see you in the next one.